Hello, my name's Daniel from CG Dreams, and we are in the third video from the series of Cinema 4D Hair System. And in this particular case, it's a part of the system in which we were growing guides from splines. In volume three, we are gonna be going through a slightly different method where we're not gonna be using splines, but we're gonna be using a density map. So I'm gonna be using the asset that I've used in the previous video so that I can continue from where we left off. The first thing is, is I want to make a brand new map for this character. And to do this, we're gonna go into uh, body paint. So I'm gonna go up to the top right and select the layout for body paint. I'm gonna to go to the top left and you can see here, we've got this wizard. And in this wizard, we wanna deselect everything, go to the bottom and make sure we've only got the character in this particular case selected. We're gonna click on next. And we want to make sure that we don't recalculate UVs. We want single material mode only, click next. And we also want to make sure that we've got um, just this options on. So for instance, we don't want to rescale, we don't want to have automatic interpolation. We just want to have it at set size map. So for instance, 1024 by 1024, or if you want it really neat, you can go higher than that. But I think for this purpose, it would be fine. Make sure that the color is set to white. So we click on it and set it to white. Now, the density map works in the opposite direction, um, that being that it's the it's the white which is going to actually have the hair growing from it. Well, in this particular case, we're going to be filling in white, painting it black, and then inversing the map. And the reason why is because if we completely fill this in black, we ain't going to be able to see what we're doing. So with that said, I'm going to click Finish, and that's done. I'm going to select the paintbrush on the left hand side here and we want the color black. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around where I feel that the hairline should be. So you can see it's pretty low res, but that's fine for this demonstration purpose. I'm just going to go around. And the purpose of this is so that we can have the hair growing specifically from a hairline that we choose. This is particularly important when we've got geometry that we're trying to grow hair from that doesn't confine to the hairline that we want. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna go back now to the standard startup menu, or shall I say layout. Let's select our character here, and I'm gonna to go to the live selection. I'm just gonna open up this material. And in the material, we've got um, texture preview. I just wanna have it no scaling. This is just so I can see the texture in the viewport more clearly. Now, the next thing is I wanna select in polygon mode here, and I just wanna trace roughly around where the line is. Okay. And I'm just going to go around. What's really important here is not how accurate you are in placing it on the line, but how accurate you are as in making sure that the black area of the texture is covered. This is very, very important. You can go over the line to a certain degree, but we want to keep it within the proximity of where our texture map we just created is. Okay, I'm going to just go over there a little bit more there. Now, if we want to quickly fill in the selection, what we can do is we can go up to the select menu and we can click on fill, or you can just go to press the U and then the F key then it will actually fill in the selection and it will just be just out the boundaries and then you can just go back in there again and just fill in those boundaries it's just a, a bit quicker way of doing it okay that didn't take too long at all The reason why we're adding the selection set to the whole entire scalp area is because it opens up the opportunity later on to add more hair guides 
where we want to grow from. That's that's great. So next thing is, is I want to go to the simulate menu and we go to the hair object and click on add hair. Now I want to just undock a few things here. So undock this, this. We're going to be using these. Okay, that will do for now. What I want to do is I want to select all of these. So I believe I didn't undock these. That's the one I want. I'm going to select all and hit the delete key. We've got a hair object, but we've got no guides. This is the next part. What we're going to do in the next part is we're going to be painting some guides based upon the texture map that we've got in here. And then all will become very um, clear as to what I'm doing. In our hair grooming tools, we've got this add guides. When we select add guides in the uh, menu to the right here, we can set it up so it's going to be perfect for our usage. In this particular case, we want the radius to be zero. We want the count to be just one. And the spacing is how frequent a guide is going to be added. So as an example, when I do this, you can see how far apart each guide is. I don't need them to be quite that close together. So I'm going to increase this to about 30-ish. OK, that's a bit more better. I'm going to set the length down. We don't need this quite as long. And I'm going to start just going around the edge. Again, I'm following this black texture map. Another thing you can do to make sure that you're in line with everything is to select the section set. Make sure we select the right one so that you know exactly where you've got to be going. It kind of gives you a good idea what you're doing here. Okay. We've got the black texture in the background there. And we've also got the hairline as well. But the black texture is really important because this is our hairline that we're going to be restricting the hairs to be growing from. Now you can get away with less guides than this. I think for the most part we're okay. I would prefer to use a bit more of a high resolution map than this to be quite honest with you. You're going to get much neater results. Okay, that will do. It looks like we've gone over and added a few more extras that we didn't really need. I'm going to go back to the hair object and I'm just going to go to the guides and just bring these guides down a bit shorter just so we can manage them a little bit more easier. Now the good thing about doing it this particular way is that all of our grooming brushes when it comes to grooming we can turn on the collisions and it will respect the collisions of the underlying geometry. If you use splines you won't get this. The difference here obviously is that the fact that we've now got the hair growing from a specific region right where the hairline should be. This would be absolutely impossible to do from um, polygon selections alone because the polygon selections are simply just not following this kind of route around the hairline. Now let's just get this roughly in place here. I'm not going to spend too long on the styling. Just want to kind of get something half decent to demonstrate this. Okay. Let's just puff up that. That will do me just for the moment anyway. Okay, so we need to get the hairs to follow these guides. Go to our hair, go to the editor and go to guidelines and then click on hairlines. Now, 
we have to make sure that we've got the root set to the right place. So we go to root, polygon area. Now at the moment, the whole entire polygon area for a selection set is covered with hair, which you may be thinking that's fine, but we really don't need that much hair and we really want to have a little bit more control. So how do we do this? So we've got a bit more control. Well, this is where we're going to use our map because at the moment our map's not actually being used for anything other than a guide. So what we're going to do is we're going to restrict in the hairs in the growth menu by selecting this density map. So I'm going to click on this little tiny triangle, go to bitmap and our bitmap is automatically in there. Let's just go to our brush tool. I'm going to destroy this style for the minute just so we can see where exactly our hair is growing from when it comes to the guides and when it comes to the hair selection. Let's just pull this out. We've got all this hair that we don't want. We need to click on the map. At the moment the map's in the wrong direction as, as far as the color space goes. So we're going to change the black point to 1 and the white point to 0. And we go back to our hair object. And the levels we want is just 2. This means that basically we're just using black and white. You'll notice that when we've done this, we now only have hair growing from the, um, the area in which our map is actually telling it to grow from. This is going to give us the, uh, the perfect start to create a sweep over hairstyle without adding unnecessary hair to the rest of the object. So now we can sweep it over and get a much more finer result without the intersections of hair underneath getting in the way. With just about 10 minutes of styling, you can see here that you can easily create a sweep over comb back style with ease. And the whole point of this is that we've got control over the particular hair line that we want to be following and not having to have too many hairs occupy the underneath hairs that are coming from the front so that we can render it out a lot more quicker. And there we go, just a really quick render. And you can see here that it's following the hairline exactly the way that I painted out and that is really ideal. Remembering that behind this hair that we can see swept over, there is no other hair being generated. So this is going to save us on render time. This only took 1 minute 39 seconds and that is with ZBrush open, Photoshop open and my screen capturing software.